So how many people make good contacts this morning? Okay, that's good. We gotta work on that because networking, as my good friend Roy Hastick from the Caribbean American Chamber says, works. So today we're here to learn a little bit more about our state and great opportunities for our membership. We have a, an organization, Empire State Development, that's responsible for pillars of incentives, grants, helping international businesses, small businesses, minority and women business uh, certified certifications, minority and women owned businesses. It sounds like uh, we could work well together. It sounds like our basic membership. And uh, let's put our hands together for you, our members, and our staff, Helena Nat. I see uh, Greg over there who runs our political action committee. And uh, I see a couple of board members here, Jack Craven and Arthur Rosenfield. Um, I want to thank them for giving me permission to run, encouraging me to run for the New York State Assembly in 2020. So you all will have a stronger voice. So you, you can go to our website and, and make your voice count. I know we have uh, Brian Anderson from the Census here and uh, Eric Gertler, our special guest, might, might tell you a little bit more about that because Empire State Development. Well, first of all, let's put our hands together for the Empire State. We live in the greatest state, in the greatest country, and we're all doing better for it because we all work together and we understand that the small business and the entrepreneur, and I see Peter Fennell here from the Small Business Administration, thanks for coming. I know the governor's big on global initiatives and New York Glows Global is very important. And I see, uh, I see our commissioner here from, stand up. And um, we also have Eric, I mean Steve Kramer. Steve Kramer. Steve Kramer is helping me with my campaign and he runs something called Get Out the Vote. So we're gonna make every vote count. That's what the census is about. I also wanna thank Sprint and Carver Bank and uh, Helen Field, Fold uh, School of Nursing. Uh, I see a growing business in here, Fago. Uh, Brazilian Steakhouse, who likes Brazilian steak? Yeah. Yeah. Now I don't travel around the state as much as our new, uh, our, our new uh, Empire State Development CEO, but you know, we've worked in Buffalo and Rochester, and when I went to Rochester uh, after the Lieutenant Governor Robert Duffy uh, has stepped down, and he was the police commissioner in Rochester, he became the mayor in Rochester, and he goes, I go, why'd you step down? And he goes, I wanna run uh, the Rochester Business Alliance. Will you come up and spend the day with me in Rochester? So I'm picked up at the airport by the former police commissioner. I feel very safe. And he took me to some Rochester icons. One of them was Wegmans, where I met the Wegman family and the Wegman corporate team, and I go, wow, why don't we have this downstate? I mean, this is the best supermarket experience I've had in my life. So I was proud to be at the ribbon cutting for Wegmans and now we're doing a new Wegmans opening this May in my hometown of Harrison. Yeah. So that, that's, that's delicious, that's smart. And uh, that's what Empire State Development's about, helping businesses no matter how small and no matter how large grow and prosper. So one of the reasons, and again, I don't want to harp too much on politics that we're running to have a voice in the state legislator uh, as an assembly person is because we need to get economic development right. We can't say we don't want that billion dollar company here. Those are bad jobs because it just detracts from economics 101. For every good job, there's a lot more entry level jobs. And we, again, are so proud to have raised the minimum wage. We doubled the minimum wage and we are getting our payback now. Everybody's doing better, the economy's doing better, the state's doing better, and what better time to introduce Eric Gertler. Now this man is a pretty smart guy. I think he was on the law review. I just passed the bar. In fact, the only bar I ever passed was the New York State Bar. Every other one I try to stop for a drink at. <laughs> but he was on the law review and uh, he helped run U.S. News and World Report, a pres prestigious ranking system. He was also very much involved with one of my favorite reads every morning, the Daily News. He helped to do economic development here in New York City uh, with the New York City Economic Development Corporation. 
And I think our paths merged indirectly when I was asked to go to China. There's a program that our members administer called the EB-5 program, and they've done 27 projects. So we went to China for a weekend, three nights. We gave lectures to rich Chinese families that wanted to get green cards. The process is a two-year process. We raised $179 million and created Link New York City, the high-speed internet. And we were also privileged to work with our mayor and uh, our borough president on the .nyc domain. And I know Eric had a lot to do with that because we are trying to get more business and become as big as Silicon Alley in California. And that's why we need to fight for people like Amazon and help them come here and make them feel welcome. So at that point, I would like to welcome Eric Gertler, the new president and CEO of Empire State Development. Such kind remarks, I appreciate it. Clearly, uh, my mother has your cell phone number. In <laughs> uh, and such kind words about the state. I, you know, I don't mind actually doing the introduction from you from now on, and you can talk about the state, because you're so positive, which, uh, which I am as well, and there's lots of things to be positive about. Um, and as they say, you, you, you had me from the beginning. You walk in and you see Helena, and she greets you with a great open smile, you know that you're welcome here, and I appreciate all the great work that you do for economic development, for, uh, for New York City. Um, the only complaint that I have is you've, you've uh, and this is a terrific, terrific breakfast, um, serving bagels. I didn't see a toaster, by the way. So <laughs> uh, morning, everyone. I haven't had enough coffee yet. but. Uh, <laughs> You know, I appreciate being invited for breakfast. I appreciate the audience. And now I find out that I got to compete with Thursday night cocktails. So, um, but I'm happy to have the, uh, I'm happy to have this uh, slot uh, this morning. Um, I also just wanted to uh, acknowledge one person uh, from our team who uh, does uh, spend all of his time focusing on New York City, Joe Taswell, who does such a great job of now. Thank you, and uh, as Mark, Mark said, uh, I am Eric Gertler, I am the President and CEO of Empire State Development, and I can tell you that, um, I'll tell you a little bit about my background afterwards, but it's a real privilege to be able to be in this position, to, uh, to serve the Governor, um, and to serve all of you and the people of, of New York State. So, uh, with that I want to tell you that 2020 promises to be a very busy year for the state. Um, it's, uh, it's barely two weeks into the new year and we've already made a, a lot of progress and it's already been an event, eventful one. And I can tell you that if you take just the first two weeks, this, um, what's happened in the last two weeks for myself, this is my second sit in government, but it makes you proud to be in public service and to be able to serve um, this governor. So. Let me just go back to the to the first week, uh, you know, of the new year. Start started off on uh, last Sunday, so so about 12 days ago, and I had the privilege of joining the governor at Foley Square uh, to march uh, across Brooklyn Bridge um, and to see his great support and his great words against anti-Semitism. And then, uh, and many of you, uh, and some of you may have been there, then the next day, uh, proud to be in the audience when uh, the governor at the Abney lunch announced the expansion of Penn Station, the Empire Station Complex, a vision for New York City, and a vision about how to think about transportation in the 21st century. Two days later, since this I'm new on the job, it was my first time to go to Albany and listen to the state of the state and hear a grand vision by the governor for the state. Um, and, you know, given this was my first time being there for the state of the state, it was his ninth state of the state, and he had lost, uh, you know, no sleep, full energy, uh, focused, visionary, and delivered one of the most remarkable speeches I had ever seen. Um, and then going back earlier on Monday, I was not present when the governor 
uh, helped to save someone on the BQE. So, you know, he, he does all of these uh, heroic efforts, and I can tell you that uh, it really, truly is a privilege to uh, work, uh, work for him and work for the administration. And this morning, it's an honor to work, uh, to, to be present with all of you. Um, you know, as, as Mark said, the businesses that you run, the, what you do as executives and entrepreneurs, fuel this economy, uh, ensure that our, our state economy and our, lo our local economy uh, is moving forward. We understand, uh, I do from my, my business background, understand what you need to do to build businesses, how hard it is, um, and that is why um, one of the approaches the governor has taken is a bottoms-up approach. This idea of, of making sure that we're listening to what is most important um, at, at the local level. And so it's not just a vision for the state, but it's also figuring out the blocking and the tackling that's needed um, on the local level. And, uh, and of course, the governor, as do I, we understand that a state economy is critical and a strong economy in New York City is, is also critical. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend some time walking through some of the key points of the state of state. I want to give you a sense of what we're thinking about for 2020, what are uh, the proposals uh, and, and, the, uh, and the vision. But if you um, uh, allow me, I'll just give you uh, a few, uh, few things about my background. Uh, Mark was kind enough to, to talk about a number of the things that I've, that I've done. But uh, I've really had the privilege to do a wide-ranging uh, number of, of things. Uh, one of the great privileges was to work with, as Mark pointed out, the New York Daily News. I, in fact, started uh, my career here in New York City uh, working to help acquire uh, the Daily News uh, in the early 90s. Um, worked as a general counsel and worked in many different roles and then left and then a number of years ago uh, uh, came back. In fact, uh, uh, we, uh, as, as part of the new, new business model, uh, we worked with a number of different businesses, including Mr. Schnapps in the back of the back. So, how are you? Good to see you. Thank you for coming. Um, and, uh, you know, I came back as publisher about five years ago, and I think I became one of the few people in this country who had the privilege of buying a newspaper and then being part of a group to sell, sell the newspaper. And I think that's a, a reflection of uh, what's going on um, in the local newspaper business. Uh, I was uh, not as brave as some people in this room who, are, uh, who have figured out a new and smart model um, in, in local media, but I can assure you that um, it is critical, it is critical that we have uh, newspapers and local outlets uh, to ensure that we're delivering uh, fair and factual information every day to, um, to uh, New Yorkers and quite frankly everybody in the country and the world. Um, I also worked as an entrepreneur. Um, I know how tough it is to build businesses from the scrap from scratch. I can tell you that I had many days, and I'm sure some of you feel this, where um, I started off the day feeling like uh, I was going to go bankrupt. Sometime in the afternoon, I felt like I was onto a billion dollar business, and then I sort of developed probably at one of these Thursday night cocktails. I sort of became more realistic and sort of realized that it'll be somewhere in the middle. Um, but one of the toughest things to do is to build your own business, and I respect that and. It's one of the important things that we do at ESD to help figure out how you grow your businesses and provide you with the support um, and the resources uh, that you need. And, and then as, as, as Mark said, I also had uh, the privilege of serving in local government. I served, uh, uh, I started under Mayor Bloomberg, focusing on job growth here in New York City, thinking about how we grow uh, industry, uh, how to think about how um, industry can be accelerated to help businesses and individuals growing those businesses. Um, so this has been my, my second stint. And then, and then lastly, uh, before joining uh, the governor, I was executive chairman of U.S. News and World Report, known to many by the rankings that are produced in best colleges, best hospitals. But what I learned was when you have to rank something, uh, you have to look, you have to look at those rankings, you have to know why you're ranking them, and if you're not looking at how you can improve, then you're never going to be, you know, improving. And when you're being ranked, you're being held accountable, and that has been uh, one of the uh, tenets of my life: is making sure uh, 
um, that I, you know I remain accountable to uh, the goals that we have, um, you know, to the people, um, and to everything that uh, that we do. And, and you know, in, in in those seconds that I forget, we have a governor that makes sure that uh, you know that we're doing uh, what 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 is important. Um, and then and then lastly, just one of the stories. Um, you know, through all these experiences, I've, I've realized that it's critically important to respect and listen. Um, I'm not just here to speak. I'm here to um, to to listen to to what's what's going on, uh, to make sure that we're involved. Um, as as one of my mentors says, when you go into negotiation, it's critical that you feel as though you're in, you know, your opponent's shoes. In fact, as my mentor said, it's important that you walk a mile in your opponent's shoes. And why? Because if the deal doesn't work out, you know, you've walked a mile away from your opponent and you have their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let's, let's dive into this thing. Thank you. Um, and, you know, first thing that I can report is the state of our state is really, um, is really quite strong. It's been 10 years where we've seen tremendous progress. And as you know, Many long-delayed projects, particularly in infrastructure, that never got off the ground, are finally moving forward. And we know that um, we are doing so um, at a time when there's great anxiety, there's division, uh, there's stress, particularly at the national level. But in New York State, as, as Mark said, in the Empire State, um, we don't let those things stop us. We're sensitive to them. But we want to make sure that we are um, undertaking real progress and real accomplishments. The economy and Empire State Development is the agency. It's the state's economic uh, development arm of the state. We're very focused on the economy. We are seeing unprecedented growth. The private sector is at a record of 8.3 million private sector jobs. And at the same time, unemployment is at historic lows. And when you think about what's been happening, um, this state has seen the most aggressive, the most ambitious infrastructure program in the country. A quarter of a billion dollars have, have been invested in roads, in bridges, uh, in subways, in mass transit. You know, a series of investments that you are not seeing anywhere um, in this country. This is bigger than any other state um, in, in, in the nation. And, you know, it's something that the governor is proud of. He does not let projects languish. Um, projects that have not been, been touched and only been talked about for decades are now being moved on. And let me just give you, just very quickly, across the state, especially in New York City, rebuilding the Kashuko Bridge on budget and four years ahead of schedule, expanding the Javits Center, completing the Second Avenue subway, breaking ground on a new home for the Islanders, with the Belmont Park on, in Nassau County, and I know a number of you here are working on that project, and replacing the Tappan Zee Bridge on time and on budget with the Governor Mario Cuomo Bridge. Expanding LR, LIRR. The end of this year, in December, we're going to open up the new Moynihan Station. It'll be a train station like none you have ever seen. It will be spectacular. And then, of course, I'll talk about this a little bit later, the plan that the Governor announced to expand Penn Station, which we call the Empire Station Complex. Now, at the same time, we talk about all of these infrastructure programs, but progress is being made not just on economic issues, which we know are critical, but also on social issues, which are also important, which also define Empire State. Marriage equality, wage and benefit increases, gun safety, educational improvements, <coughs> tax relief. Simply a tremendous record of progress for all New Yorkers. On the, tax, uh, on the tax side, every New Yorker now pays a lower tax rate than they did when the governor came to office. Middle class tax rates are at the lowest in 70 years. Manufacturing tax rate, lowest in a century. Lowest tax rate for corporations in half a century. And in this state of the state, the governor announced that he will continue to lower personal income tax for middle class New Yorkers. So it'll drop both for the forty to one hundred fifty thousand dollar bracket, but also for the one hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollar bracket. So that'll save New Yorkers about a billion eight this upcoming year. 
And I might add, this is all being done responsibly. You in the business community, you need to balance your, your, uh, your payroll, um, your businesses every month. We need to do the same. The governor has to be accountable. He's done this nine times in a row, nine state, state budgets on time. You're not postponing your bills. We're not doing the same. We want to be held accountable the same way you got to be held accountable to your employees. And, you know, there's lots of things that we can talk about around, around the state. And I've had the privilege of going around New York State, 10 different regions, lots of amazing things happening around the state. But the state's success is as evident there as it is in, in New York City. And the strength of the state's economy is evident with a wide variety of measures. If we look at, if we look at the city, economic output up 46% since 2011. Private sector has added jobs nine straight years in a row since 2011 here in New York City. Um, we know that the financial services sector remains the, the anchor uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of payroll payroll revenue. But we have also seen this city become one of the highest growing, fastest growing tech industries um, in the nation. 53% increase in tech jobs since 2011. And if you take a measure of venture capital, today New York City is the number two place for venture capital investment in the country. Uh, Silicon Valley remains number one. But that's an incredible uh, set of growth for, um, you know, for this city. Uh, and, and that is uh, a product of the close to $82 billion that we as a state have invest invested in New York City in terms of infrastructure, workforce development, uh, business assistance. New York City region has been awarded through the local process, the RADC pro program, in which, the, um, uh, in which we ensure that we hear what's needed from local uh, executives, business, uh, uh, business people, uh, university officials on the ground, uh, $616 million over, over nine years. Uh, a program that has used that to leverage four and a half billion dollars in other private and public investment. So we're, we're, we're really um, efficient in terms of making sure that when we invest, we're also investing with partners uh, like yourself, with, with other um, entities. So we leverage that money and here. We've leveraged that up to $4.5 billion, which has then led to uh, almost 40,000 jobs. And you know, our measure through our lens, we're making sure we're leveraging that, and our output is making sure that we're continuing to grow. Bless you, by the way. So that we're continuing to, to, to grow jobs. And, you know, this work touches every area of New York City and every area of the economy. And I'll just run through Silver Cup Studios, location in, in, in the Bronx, which has grown uh, as a partnership. Victoria Theater in Harlem, which we have, which we have partnered with to help, help grow and create construction jobs and full-time jobs. The Howland Hook Marine Terminal on Staten Island, in which we've partnered with and provided grants and, um, and helped to uh, increase growth there. The Greenpoint Manufacturing and Design Center's Ozone uh, Park Industrial Hub. And then um, in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, the facility for nanotronics. So thinking about both ways in which we are investing in industries of the future, but also the day-to-day -day infrastructure and the workforce programs that are needed now to train people so that people are prepared for, for the future. Um, you know, with that and through these efforts, it's not just the rising um, employment, uh, it's also figuring out, which we've, I think, done successfully, how, do we, how have we and, and, uh, and worked on also cutting uh, unemployment, which we've done significantly um, across the state and, and here in, in New York City. Um, and that um, also leads us to think about we do this, how are we thinking about the industries of the future, the jobs of the future, and how do we, and I know this is all in your minds too, how do we think about workforce training and ensuring that we're helping individuals today learn the skills that they, they, that they need for the jobs of, of tomorrow. Um, I, can, I can assure you that this is a governor that does not stop. Um, he is never happy with the, with the status quo. Um, and you know, he continues to uh, work on and push 
you know, an aggressive agenda for the for the state and for, and for New York City. And this is, I mean, let's 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 face it. There are a lot of um, issues that we're facing on a on a macro level. There are macroeconomic issues. There are climate issues. There's the issue of the salt deductibility issue. So these are major macro issues that we recognize, but but we can't sit around and do nothing. We've got to continue to move forward uh, and build this uh, build this economy. So, you know, with that, one of the issues uh, is is climate change. Um, Hurricane Sandy was more uh, was certainly a wake up call. Um, interestingly for me. Um, that was a time where I felt that it was important that I go to Staten Island. I went uh, house by house. I helped people um, on New York Lane, helped to take out some of the, you know, um, uh, their clothes that got wet. You know, I remember going to a door and going up to the house and I said, can I help? And the person said, you know, to do what? I go, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And I spent the day clearing out. It was really sad. Um, all these books that were wet for their children. I mean, these were people whose lives were significantly impacted. And as the, as, as, as the governor likes, likes to say, um, he keeps on being told that these types of storms are storms that are just once a century. And these once a century storms are becoming once a year, um, whether it's in New York City or upstate, and we need to be, uh, we need to prepare. We need to recognize that climate change is one of the, um, one of the great macro changes is an existential threat to what to what we face, and we need to figure out how to tackle that. And that is part of uh, the work that that we continue to do. Um, at the same time, you know, given the uncertainty in Washington, one of the things that uh, that we announced was to do a three billion dollar uh, Restore Mother Nature Bond Act. Um, this money will be used; it will be raised to help invest in those projects to ensure that we are creating. The resiliency efforts that we need to shore up communities and neighborhoods, uh, certainly here in New York City and across the, the, the five, five boroughs. Um, as part of this, we've also ensured that we've created a multi-pronged uh, program to support first responders and maintain the state um, you know, at the level that we want. These are individuals that are working so hard and we want to make sure that they, uh, when they're called to action, that they have all the resources that they need, uh, because again, these are uh, individuals who are giving uh, their time, their efforts, their heart, their lives to making sure that we um, in the state remain uh, safe. Um, and uh, um, and again, this is not like uh, you know, 40 years ago. They are getting called on more and more often to uh, address some of these um, address some of these storms. At the same time, we each have a personal responsibility uh, to turn the tide. We can all do, um, you know, our own work. Last year, uh, the governor banned one of the uh, one of the prevalent acts of, of, of pollution, uh, plastic bags. Uh, this year, we're also looking to uh, ban styrofoam. Um, you know, very different here in the city than than, than upstate, but uh, but the ban is on single use styrofoam. Uh, single use styrofoam. Um, and in the same in the same case, uh, you know, as we think about climate change, uh, an investment and focus on uh, on greenhouse emissions, and one way to do it is to be aggressively promoting the electric vehicle industry, and we're going to start to figure out um, and implement ways to allow uh, you know green energy electric vehicles uh, to grow in in New York. So. We are also focused on the business environment. I talked a little bit about some of the um, some of the taxes. Certainly, um, uh, you know, taxes for middle class will continue to go down. We look for ways, and the governor looks for ways to provide tax relief because we know that's a critical equation in terms of how you can um, and must lead your uh, your day to day day lives. Um, cutting taxes for the mi middle class New Yorkers and small businesses we figure will benefit. Uh, a million and a half taxpayers in the five boroughs. So that's a pretty significant uh, part of the population. Um, and that includes supporting small corporate uh, taxpayers. Um, so in, in, in every situation, we're trying to be very pragmatic in figuring out how do we um, make your life easier every single day um, 
And this, of course, and, and we think about this every day, um, this is uh, against the backdrop that tax um, and offsets in New York, New York State changed very dramatically um, when Washington, and we believe, made a uh, disastrous decision uh, to, uh, to eliminate the SALT deduction, the state and local tax, tax deduction, um, which you know, we view as an assault on the state. It costs the state $15 billion annually. We are now the number one, indisputably, the number one donor state to the rest of the country in terms of the money that we send back to Washington um, that then gets distributed uh, around the country. And that's an issue that we are working on with our congressional delegation. Again, all focused for how do we ensure that we continue to improve uh, New York State. Uh, as well, from a tax standpoint, um, we will seek to expand the Empire Child Tax Credit, uh, which helps about a quarter million working families across uh, the five boroughs. And as well, um, you know, we recognize that um, you know, the economy continues to change. It continues to change in many different characteristics as we become an industry that's fueled by, uh, in different ways by technology. Um, we need to ensure that we are uh, thinking about and protecting uh, those in the gig economy. Um, they have certainly, those types of workers have grown tremendously in the last 10 years, and we just need to make sure that they as well, as they do their work, that they get the share in the successes um, of this economy. And look, the, re the reality is, and when I worked for the city, I spent a lot of time thinking about and talking about the fact that we have gone to a more complicated uh, economy. And I know all of you think about how is technology affecting your, your, your business. Many, more and more, uh, we see more people enter, you know, what we call sort of the, the knowledge economy. And it's interesting, I used to give a speech uh, many years ago about how when the internet uh, came about, it meant that you can live and work anywhere. Um, but the reality is, is that with technology and which the advent of sort of the knowledge that's required, people actually want to work closer together. And people are coming back to cities. We're seeing this in New York City. We're seeing this upstate with all the downtown revitalization in initiatives that we're doing. And people don't only, not only want to be in cities, they want to be in shared workspaces together. So, um, so we see that, and, and one of the answers is to make sure that you know, what was needed 50 years ago was a high school diploma. What is needed even more now is a college degree, and, uh, and we want to make that easier uh, for, for New Yorkers. And so uh, in doing so, we've also raised the eligibility threshold for the Excelsior Scholarship. We've raised it from 125,000. You're eligible now at 150,000. And this opens the door for more than 121,000 New York City residents to go to college, tuition free. Um, you know, as well, uh, this has been in the, in, in the news a lot. Uh, the agenda includes uh, a responsible and reasonable way to legalize uh, cannabis. We've announced the creation of a new Office of Cannabis Management uh, to ensure that um, uh, we are thinking about it appropriately for medical, adult, and home use. And it's done in a way that uh, is smart, reasonable, and uh, protects, the, uh, protects the, the public. Uh, as well, building on our efforts from, from last year, uh, increasing progressive measures to ensure that uh, we're opening the doors so that um, New Yorkers who have not been able to can fully participate uh, in our society. Uh, and with that, a focus on legalizing gestational surrogacy and helping LGBTQ couples and other couples struggling with infer infertility. It's done uh, in many other states around the country. It should also be supported in the Empire State. Um, and as you can see, you can look at all of these programs. Uh, simply, we've advanced the strongest and most dramatic agenda for women in this country that any state uh, has supported. Uh, to name a few, we will pass the first in the nation inclusive equal rights amendment, create a woman's corporate leadership academy, improve representation for women on corporate boards, and enhance programs that support and protect victims of domestic violence. As the governor's done in so many areas, it's important to ensure that our um, our agenda, our social agenda, is the most aggressive agenda, 
And of course, that means simply um, women should be supported in all of these, all, all of these programs. Well, um, you know, I've talked about cannabis, I've got to talk about beer. <laughs> um, you know, a century ago, New York City had a thriving uh, beer industry um, under the governor, and I've been many places upstate. We've seen the craft beer industry flourish again. Uh, we've seen uh, breweries in New York City uh, as well starting to, to flourish. Um, with Finback in Glendale, Brooklyn Brewery, Flagship in Staten Island, I mean, I can go on, and we will continue to support the craft beverage uh, manufacturing by eliminating the barriers and reforming antiquated laws that are preventing this from happening. It's an important industry in New York, and we want to make sure that it can flourish in the state and in, in New York City. So, as I talked about um, at the beginning, one of the um, big, visionary, bold initiatives that the governor announced was um, how do we think about expanding Penn, Penn Station? And the reality is, is that when you think about um, how cities are working, the idea that we're seeing greater and greater congestion uh, with cars, um, dealing with a, the need to uh, create a greater green economy, the way to do it is to enhance our mass transit alternatives. Uh, the governor has been focused on trains and subway. Penn Station is the busiest uh, station, busiest transportation station, bar none, in this hemisphere. And um, the reality is, is that when Penn Station was built over 100 years ago, it was designed to accommodate 200,000 people. Today we have 650,000 people that go through that station every day. So it's way over <coughs> its, its capacity. But it's, but it's in two ways. One is we need to ensure that there's more capacity in terms of the station itself. And that is going to be solved when we open up Moynihan Station at the end of the year. And as I said, this will be a world-class station. So as you can see, we're you know Farty Building and the Moynihan Train Hall. Um, that will add to, uh, to capacity at the, at the train station. But what all of this does not do, it does not allow for additional track capacity. And as more and more people are coming into New York City, we need to make sure that we can have more trains come in. And so this, this plan to add eight more tracks where it says new terminal is to ease the congestion, ease the track, and ensure that uh, those that come into New York um, uh, can do so at all times, um, can do so in a way that, um, that is free of congestion, uh, it's a plan that's been needed for, for years. Daniel Patrick Moynihan talked about this decades ago. Nothing has been done. It's been, uh, it's been all talk, no action. Um, and, uh, and the governor decided that we need to get this done. He announced it last Monday. Um, and that is a project that I am focused on now every single day. Um, and this goes in line with all of the other infrastructure programs that um, uh, that we've been that we've been working on, you know, as well. Um, in line with that, uh, it's also important that we create faster, better ways to move around the state. And so, we've also announced an initiative to bring uh, high-speed rail uh, to, uh, to 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 the state. You know, as part of the investment that we make, we've certainly in um, in subways and uh, and rails. Uh, we're also focusing on investment ex in accessibility. Uh, making 70 key subway stations ADA accessible. Uh, it's important that our uh, mass transit system is accessible uh, to all. You know, above everything else, health remains the number one priority. Um, every day, the top of the list, health and safety of all New Yorkers. And just a few things that we're focusing on, uh, vaping, which, um, you know, has become a habit that is way too dangerous for many, many young people. And it's resulted in needless deaths. Um, it's heartbreaking, but it's also preventable. And one of the things that we plan to do is ban the sale of flavored nicotine vaping products uh, to, to young people. Uh, there's no way that we should be allowing uh, some of the tragedies that we've seen happen. At the same time, 
we recognize that the costs of, of drugs, um, of pre prescription drugs, keeps on rising. Um, we are seeking to cap the, cap the cost of, of insulin. Um, two ways, we're going to go after drug companies that we believe have, have unscrupulous habits. And if, and if need be, um, we're also starting to think about ways in which we can uh, work with our northern border, um, our northern uh, neighbor rather, uh, in Canada, and see if there's ways in which we can ensure that we can bring um, those costs down. It's, it's unacceptable, um, and there's no way we should have those uh, costs. Uh, you know, in the same way, we know that as um, cities become, um, you know, more and more populated, it means, means that we need uh, more and more housing. Um, and again, as part of the state of the state, uh, we will continue the governor's historic $20 billion plan to create and preserve uh, 100,000 affordable housing units. Um, this, is, uh, this is critical. Uh, the governor understands his responsibility in this area. Um, and we are uh, you know, committed to uh, continuing to, to focus on this. We've already uh, constructed and preserved 60,000 units, so we continue to work and focusing on, on, our, uh, on our goal. Um, at the same time, 2019 was a tragic year for the NYPD. Uh, it was a year sadly hit by a number of, of suicides. Uh, one is too many, 10 is unfathomable, and part of the state of state is to work on programs to help support New York, uh, and, you know, NYPD, but also first responders, law enforcement officers, military veterans. Um, you know, these are individuals that give uh, to the state, they give to the city, they put their lives online, uh, they undergo a lot of stress, and we need to help support them. In the same way, we see this and read about it every day. Um, you know, the, the, the scourge of, of gun violence uh, continues to increase. Um, it's scary. It's certainly unacceptable. Um, under the governor, we have passed the strongest gun control laws in the nation. And we're also going to go now this year to another level. And it's, it's really, um, you know, it's scary how technology sometimes outpaces the law. And today, I don't know if some of you know this, but with 3D printers, you can actually print untraceable 3D printed ghost guns. Um, you know that are uh, you can sort of download a file to your computer, plug in the 3D computer, and print a gun on your own in your house. And we are going to announce that we will ban that. Uh, we cannot have untraceable guns on the street. Um, we have to figure out how to ensure that that does not, does not happen. Uh, at the same time, uh, we all have, have concerns about the transparency of our government officials. Uh, we want to now require that all elected officials who earn greater than $100,000 release their tax returns. Too long, we have had a view that some of our legislatures, legislators uh, have not been transparent. We don't want to live and work in an environment like that. You need to know um, whether or not legislators uh, and officials uh, are being totally transparent. Um, and that is something that we will um, uh, work on. Um, as well, we, uh, we care about your, your privacy. One of the most annoying things. No, I don't want to open up a bank account. <laughs> Robocalls. That was planned, by the way. <laughs> but uh, we know that you get um, overwhelmed with a lot of these annoying, uh, time-consuming calls. Uh, 90,000 complaints in New York City alone, um, and we will put an end to that. Uh, you know, in, in um, you know, as well, it. Um, I, I have been really proud to stand with the governor um, when um, you know he has focused on uh, social issues and protecting uh, and ensuring that New York State is a place that welcomes everyone here for religious, economic, racial, social freedoms. Um, this state has been open to the world for uh, centuries. 
Um, it needs to be a place where people feel welcome, uh, irrespective of their religion, faith, uh, faith orientation. Um, with this in mind, and to protect um, uh, New Yorkers, those that um, that uh, you know do not um, allow that to happen, those that uh, bring their hate uh, to the streets, uh, those that seek to um, uh, do injurious harm or kill others um, uh, will be faced with what will be the first in the nation domestic terrorism law uh, to include mass violence motivated by hate. It is activity and actions that is purely unacceptable. Um, as I said earlier, one of the proudest moments that I've had in this administration was to send with the governor when he made this announcement uh, against anti-Semitism. But he's, ama he's made it against um, you know, every, every, every group. He will not stand for um, not having the tolerance that is required and for protecting all New Yorkers, uh, you know, irrespective of race, creed, orientation. Um, and so, um, so that really gives us a sense of, of some of the issues that we're thinking about in, in 2020. Um, you know, I just, I just want to end by saying you know, I get the privilege of uh, driving around the state and seeing all the things that are going on um, in all ten regions. And I look at it, uh, I look at it this way from an economic standpoint. If New York State were a country, we'd have a GDP of 1.7 trillion dollars. That would make us the tenth largest country in the world. We have an economy that's larger than Russia, an economy that's larger. Um, than South Korea, an economy that's larger than Spain, an economy that's just smaller than, than Canada, um, you know, which is you know, geographically the second largest country in the world. And so, um, you know, with a population of you know, about 19 and a half million um, and you know, the range of you know, six and a half billion dollars of goods that are exported, I mean, this is a huge, dynamic, growing, interesting, complex state. Um, we're investing in the right things. It's why statewide we're number two in terms of academic research and development, number three in terms of the NIH grants that we get, New York City number two in terms of venture capital. I can go on and on with all these statistics where we you know, rank anywhere from one to five across the nation with all the things that we do. Um, it's the reason why with all the interesting things that we have in New York City around the state, you know, we are seeing millions of tourists, 250 million tourists visited New York State last month, last year. That's incredible, a quarter, you know, quarter of a billion people. And again, you know, I look around and I look at it proudly, private sector, <coughs> jobs, all-time high, unemployment at an all-time low. Uh, these are indications, uh, statistics, um, that we've got to keep up. And to do so, we need to continue to be smart about working uh, with those on the ground, working with businesses like yourselves, working with executives uh, like yourself, and working with chambers of commerce uh, like yourself. So, Mark, thank you for giving me the opportunity to come here this morning. Uh, I very much appreciate it. So.